Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news happening on Detroit's west side. A 26-year-old man shot and killed in a dispute over a woman. Those shots fired on Dearborn Street near I-75. Tim Pamplin has just arrived on the scene. Tim. We're in a rather deserted part of Detroit, southwest Detroit, where the new Gordie Howe Bridge is going to go. This is Melville and Dearborn in southwest Detroit. Fatal shooting occurring just a short time ago after two young ladies got into a fist fight. That's when the men got involved. One pulls up in a red truck, you see it parked over there, gets out, gets into a fist fight with one of the girl's boyfriends, I'm being told. That's when he pulled out his weapon, shot this victim one time in the back. He's dead on the scene, body laying in front of that Ford Explorer there. Detroit police telling me when they got to the scene, the shooter was standing here. Said he's got a permit. Whether or not this was justified, well, that's for the courts to figure out. I am being told the man who's been shot did not have any weapons. That is the scene in southwest Detroit with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. Okay, Tim. Tonight, two employees of the Macomb County Clerk's Office are on administrative leave after having trouble with clerk Karen Spranger. The most recent incident from last week ended with one of the employees calling 911 on Spranger. Coco McAvoy joins us live from the Macomb County Clerk's Office. Uh, Coco, so what led up to this? Kimberly, the employee called 911 because she says Karen Springer was trying to look through her purse to see if she had any clerk related documents. And we got a copy of the 911 call. 911, what is the address of your emergency? The 911 call is from last Friday, and the emergency was coming straight from Macomb County Clerk's Office. The employee was clearly upset. Just meet this whole post. I need to get okay. in touch with Lieutenant Rollo. We have an issue that's here. That issue involves personal documents, which the employee who called 911 was trying to take to the Human Resources Department. Okay, is this something that's time sensitive right now? Yes, it is. According to the police report, Clerk Karen Springer was following the employee to look through her purse and make sure she wasn't taking any confidential county clerk documents. And the county clerk is intervening and, and, and it's things that are of confidential nature. A deputy arrived and found nothing in the purse except a couple of check stubs, personal notes, and copies of union correspondence emails, all personal items. But Springer wanted to look at the emails. The report says Springer got upset, saying it was, quote, her right to look at the emails, but was denied and told she could get electronic copies because they're county emails. Now the employee has asked to be placed on paid administrative leave after a tense situation at the Macomb County clerk's office and we reached out to the employee but she said she did not want to comment tonight back to you what a, well coco what about karen springer have you been able to talk with her yes so we did call karen springer and she answered but she said she also didn't want to comment tonight she says she will comment tomorrow after her lawyers review the case okay we'll look forward to hearing from her then coco we appreciate it The Ohio man who rammed his car into a group of counter protesters in Charlottesville killing a woman is held without bond tonight. James Fields Jr. is from Maumee, Ohio, and he has given the folks in that town quite a scare. They came out tonight to denounce his actions and his beliefs. Mara McDonald is in Maumee tonight. Mara. You know, nobody in this crowd actually knew Fields, but they cannot believe that everything they saw in Charlottesville actually has a connection to their small town. Hundreds horrified over the pictures they saw coming out of Charlottesville no hate. took to the street tonight. I was horrified and then when I, I discovered that the car that did it was registered in this very county, I blew a gasket. No racist USA! I know that racism is everywhere, you know, and um, I wondered, you know, really mommy, Ohio, it's so close to home. It's inconceivable to so many here why a 20-year-old man would be so consumed by his prejudices he'd become a Nazi sympathizer and not only march in the Charlottesville rally on Saturday, but then take his car and ram it into a crowd of counter-protesters. I'm in standing up for all lives, for black lives, for anyone who's been oppressed and for America. And I want people to know that all are welcomed and loved and accepted. Fields was photographed hours before police say he rammed his car into the crowd, marching in the rally with a shield with the Vanguard America logo. I was born and raised in this town. I, it was 
I was taught valuable lessons and to love people and that there's hate in this world and hate in this town. I just want to counteract that with some little bit of love. Realize Fields didn't grow up in Maumee. He went to high school in Kentucky, where it turns out his radical racist views were well known, as well as his love for Adolf Hitler. We're in Maumee. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, and security is on high alert outside Trump Tower as President Trump stays at his New York City home for the first time since inauguration. More than 1,000 protesters gathered outside Trump Tower in anticipation of the president's arrival. Police used sand-filled sanitation trucks as barriers around the building, as well as metal police barricades at the front entrance. The protesters angry at the president's response to the violence in Charlottesville. And tonight, a group of protesters pulled down and destroyed a Confederate statue outside a government building in Durham, North Carolina. After the monument came down, people kicked the statue. Organizers say the rally was planned to, quote, build a movement to smash white supremacy. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper responded by saying, the racism and deadly violence in Charlottesville is unacceptable, but there is a better way to remove these monuments. Since 6 o'clock, investigators in France are ruling out terrorism after a man rammed his car into a pizza shop outside of Paris. A 12-year-old girl was killed in the crash and 13 others were hurt. Police believe the man was under the influence of drugs and possibly suicidal when he purposely drove his car into the business. The 31-year-old is in custody. The nine-month-old baby police say was shaken by a man in Ida Township has died. The baby is Kingsley Schwartz. Her mother dropped her off at the home of 32-year-old Justin Davis. Someone in that house later called 911 to report the baby couldn't breathe. Doctors determined Kingsley had injuries consistent with abuse. Davis appeared in court today on charges of first degree child abuse, and those charges will likely be upgraded now since the baby has died. A Monroe County man is in custody charged with sexually assaulting one woman and attacking another with a sword. Police say the women were invited to the man's home in LaSalle Township, and for unknown reasons, he attacked one of them with a sword, cutting her face. She ran to a neighbor's house to call 911. The other woman was sexually assaulted before she was able to escape. The suspect led police on a chase before eventually crashing into a tree. So this one is good news, bad news. The drive along one stretch of eight miles is about to get a lot smoother, but you know that means orange barrels coming out. Tonight, work started on a $5 million project to resurface 8 Mile from the Southfield Freeway to Woodward Avenue. During the project, some lanes will be blocked at night and on weekends. That project is expected to be complete by the end of October. Well, new research weighs in on the lifestyle habits between cat owners and dog owners. Mm, the one big difference between the two involves dating. We'll have that coming up. An explosion sends black smoke over Cedar Point. What caused the blast that had park guests fearing the worst? Ben? Kim, we are now less than one week away from a historic event. For the first time in nearly 100 years, a total solar eclipse will run its course through the continental United States. Up next, why so many people are flocking to small towns all over the country to see this site and how you can view it without doing permanent damage to your eyes. You probably see them all the time. The Ninja Coffee Bar. The Futsuki. Copper Chef. Flex Tape. Pocket Hose Ultra. But do they really work? That's cold. This could be really bad. We're putting them to the test to see which one works better. All week long, as seen on TV products, put to the test on Local 4 News Today. See if they're worth your money or just a waste of space. See if this Copper Chef pan lives up to its claims tomorrow morning. Detroit mornings start here from 4.30 to 7 a.m. It's an event 100 years in the making, and we're now less than one week from the total solar eclipse. And with the eclipse almost upon us, millions will be flocking to the path of totality. It's going to be pretty cool. It really <laughs> is. Ben is here to explain why next week is so special and how to watch the eclipse. You know, a lot of folks up until this point are saying, what is the big deal? Uh -huh. But I think as we get closer, everybody's going to figure it out real quick. It is the first time in nearly a century. The moon shadow will cut through America during the heart of the afternoon from coast to coast. It is truly a once in a lifetime event. And for just over two and a half minutes, an eclipse will leave millions of us in the dark. 
This isn't just any eclipse, this is a total solar eclipse. And in order for a total solar eclipse to happen, the Earth, Sun, and Moon all have to get in line, in exact line, which doesn't happen often. Here's how it works. The Sun is approximately 400 times larger than the Moon, but keep in mind that the Sun is also about 400 times farther away, which means to us they appear to be about the same size. When the Moon moves between the Earth and the Sun, it casts a shadow, and when the Sun and Moon are precisely aligned, they create a total solar eclipse, at least for those lucky enough to be in the right spot. The path of totality, or the darkest part of the shadow cast by the moon, is about 70 miles wide and runs from Oregon all the way down to South Carolina. Southeastern Michigan will see about 80% of the eclipse's full effect, so to get the most out of this eclipse, you're going to have to hit the road. Towns all over the country, especially those that are on the line of totality, have been gearing up for a rush of tourists. Cities like Madras, Oregon, a town with less than 7,000 residents, are preparing for 100,000 people. An event so big that the city actually appointed a solar eclipse planner. Eclipsophiles, or umprophiles, will go far and wide to see this phenomenon. And for people like Billy and Sharon Haas, this has been their life since 1991. We keep telling our families that this is great. Yeah. Well, now we're going to all be together and show them that it's great. Whether or not you capture it on film, capture it in your imagination, because it's pretty special. Chances are you'll want to capture the moment, committed to memory, but you need to be careful and remember what your parents told you. Don't stare at the sun. Very short periods of intense light measured in 10 seconds, can do damage to the central region of the retina. Barry Winkler has devoted his life to researching the eye and related areas. The only time that you might look at the eclipse without the vision-aided glasses that cut down the light by thousands and thousands of fold, the light intensity, is a uh, situation where there is totality of the eclipse and the moon has completely blocked out any sunlight. But as soon as that moon, as it passes through the sun, as soon as that moon, and you begin to see a crescent of light, immediately you should uh, turn away or put your glasses back on immediately. You can find eclipse glasses almost everywhere right now, and if you plan on taking in the eclipse, you need to get them. You should absolutely, 130%, wear this type of protective goggles before you look at the eclipse. And an important note about the glasses and eye safety, there are a lot of fakes going out to around right now, and you want to make sure your glasses pass this simple test. Look for the ISO logo and the numbers 12312-2. If you don't see them, your, those glasses are probably fake, and you'll want to look for the proper ones. Also, even if you get the real ones, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that there's no scratches, that there's no holes, and that the film is actually attached to the, uh, the, the, the cardboard, yeah. because that could cause you just as many problems. Oh. So careful. You do have to be careful, and you can't use your own sunglasses either. It has to be That's those right. special ones. You're right. Regular sunglasses do not work. Gee, so exciting, though. Just It's going to be fun. It We're is. a week away. It really is. And we just got to get clear weather. Yes, and we will hopefully be doing that yeah. pretty soon. Uh, by the way, uh, we're actually going to take you down to the path of the total eclipse. We're going to Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and we will start reporting live on Sunday night. As we mentioned, that place in Oregon is expecting 100,000. Hopkinsville expecting just as many people. <laughs> They've turned wow. the entire weekend into a festival. It should be great fun. So we'll bring you all the highlights starting on Sunday. That's fantastic. Sounds good. And speaking of eclipse weather, uh, this is what we've got looking at least seven days in advance here. Uh, this is just sort of a sneak peek of what we're expecting. Right now, it looks like uh, Kim's folks out here in South Carolina are not going to be so lucky. Uh, that looks like where we're going to probably see some clouds and thunderstorms. There may actually be a tropical storm off the shore. We'll have to be watching the Atlantic for that. Also up in Oregon, but right here in the central part of the country, including Detroit, uh, we should be seeing mostly sunny skies. So at least right now, if the forecast holds, things look 
looking good for us. We do have showers out there in our north zone stretching through right now. Those will move out, but then we're going to see another round come through tomorrow morning. Temperatures generally around 70 degrees in our metro zone starting to sink off into the 60s, but man, that humidity is back. In fact, in the metro zone right now, we're looking at muggy conditions as those dew points are moving into the mid 60s. So tomorrow morning's commute showers and a few thunderstorms as those exit. We get a little bit of a break and then some scattered showers develop in the afternoon uh, and not everybody's going to get wet from the second half and really not even from the first as well. So we'll have to keep our fingers crossed that everybody who needs rain gets it. Wednesday we start drying out at least sort of sandwiched between a better chance of thunderstorms, which is going to roll in here on Thursday. So tonight we're looking at 65 and again the showers north moving out as we get towards daybreak. That second round starts to move in. Lunchtime should be dry at 77. We'll hit our high in the low 80s. In fact, we'll break down those numbers now in your four zone forecast, similar to what we had today, but we are going to be seeing more humidity, so it's going to feel different. 83 in the city, also officially at the airport. We should see that number slightly cooler in our south zone tomorrow as we go to the low 80s here for most of uh, Linaway and Monroe County. West zone, a lot of 70s, except for Ann Arbor and Canton and Novi, which is going to hit just into the low 80s. And it's all 70s north of M59 tomorrow afternoon. Coolest numbers are going to be out in Lexington and Port Huron there on the lake shore. So numbers are going to be quite consistent here over the next seven days. And really the two chances of storms are going to be from tomorrow and then again on Thursday. Once we get into Friday, that humidity drops for good and we see a pretty nice three day stretch. And as we told you, uh, Monday's looking pretty good for that solar eclipse. Mostly sunny skies in 85. So get your glasses now. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Get prepared. Cool. All right. Thank you, Ben. Two college students are about to turn 20 cents into $5,000. Their thrift store discovery is now worth some big bucks. And a scare near Cedar Point, what sent this cloud of thick black smoke into the air next. They're men on a mission to make neighborhoods just like this one safer. The goal is to get all the houses uh, boarded up, boarded up and secure. They're targeting dangerous and abandoned homes near Detroit schools. We simply live by a motto of do what we can when we can. If you don't have money, give time. We're doing this out of our own pocket together. And they want to hear from you. Does your neighborhood need some TLC? Help me, Hank. We'll show you how you can get the help you need tomorrow at 11. Killed a Detroit police officer in a hit and run crash is heading to prison. Stephen Gazina was sentenced to 16 to 20 years for second degree murder. Gazina hit and killed officer Myron Jarrett in October of last year. And the man accused in an armored car robbery outside a 7 Eleven in Clinton Township now faces charges. 29 year old Andrew Harris charged in two robberies. Police say first he robbed a customer at a car wash on Harper, then stole $106,000 from the armored car. The one-time home of Motown Records founder Barry Gordy has been sold. The mansion in Detroit's Boston Edison District sits on more than two acres and is 10,500 square feet and includes a pool house and a carriage house. The selling price, $1.65 million. Two boats catch fire at Cedar Point Marina, sending fire crews into action. Yeah, this shocked a lot of people who were out there and saw it. Thick black smoke could be seen from miles away. The two boats were destroyed. Cedar Point says the fire did not affect park operations. The cause of the fire is under investigation. A pair of college students who spent less than $2 at a Florida thrift shop could end up walking away with thousands of dollars. The two went bargain hunting. They stumbled upon five NASA flight suits. The students paid 20 cents each for the suits. Little did they know, each of those suits valued at $5,000. The students planned to offer the suits at a special auction conducted by the American Space Museum. Great surprise there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, a new and unusual study looks at pet owners as a way of predicting who is more likely to be more loyal to their human partner. Unusual indeed. The poll found cat owners are more likely to cheat on their partner than dog owners. 26% of 1,000 cheaters surveyed owned cats and only 7% owned dogs. The study found people who own rabbits, snakes, and reptiles, rats, and mice, and fish are also more likely to cheat than people who own dogs. Well, there you go. <laughs> Just bizarre. I got nothing. <laughs> I got tigers. 